Welcome to lecture 9. In today's preparation lecture, we will develop a model for the simple harmonic oscillator and apply it to diatomic molecules to predict their vibrational spectra. This lecture will be broken up into four pieces. We will first briefly examine the classical simple harmonic oscillator before moving into the quantum simple harmonic oscillator. Once we define that system, we will apply the results to predict the spectra of diatomic molecules. Finally, we will discuss experimental considerations regarding more complex molecules. To help frame this lecture, let's look at an application of vibrational spectroscopy that some of you may already be familiar with. Pretend that you ran an experiment and you want to learn what the products were. You can take it to the Fourier Transform Infrared Spectrometer, or FTIR, shine some light on it, and a spectra, like the one on the right, is outputted. This spectra shows what energies of light, expressed as wave numbers, was absorbed. The light was absorbed because there was a specific vibration in the molecule tuned to accept that frequency of light, much like there's a frequency of pushes that would make you swing higher on a swing. Using known vibrational spectra, we can identify unknown reagents by comparing their absorption peaks. In this lecture, we will solve for the solutions of the Schrodinger equation in order to predict these transitions in diatomic molecules. Before we look at the quantum case, let's first look at the classical case. Classically, the simple harmonic oscillator is defined by Hooke's law, which states that the linear restoring force that is applied when a spring is stretched or compressed is equal to the spring constant times the displacement from the equilibrium point, defined here as L0. If we solve the differential equation defined by Newton's second law, we would get a periodic solution, one that is made up of sines and cosines. In the quantum case, we will also borrow from the classical nomenclature using angular frequency, shown here as omega, and the spring constant k to describe how atoms vibrate. In the quantum world, instead of using Newton's second law, we will use the Schrodinger equation. The potential used for a simple harmonic oscillator is a parabola, which is expressed as 1 half m times omega squared times x squared. Substituting that in the Schrodinger equation gives negative h bar squared over 2m times d squared of psi by dx squared plus 1 half m omega squared x squared times psi is equal to e psi. The solution to this differential equation is not trivial and we cannot use the same procedure that we've employed so far in the course as the solution involves Hermite polynomials. Instead, we will first apply some cunning to simplify the problem and make a simpler differential equation to solve. First, we will rewrite the Schrodinger equation in terms of the momentum operator and the position operator. This means that the Hamiltonian can be expressed as 1 half divided by m times the momentum operator squared plus m omega x hat squared times psi is equal to e psi, which of course can be expressed equally as the Hamiltonian times psi, which gives the energy times psi. 